Hi, and in this video, we're going to create a simple intro sequence for platformer games or side scroller games inside of Unity. We're going to be working upon an existing base script for follow camera. By that, I mean we're going to have a follow camera script and we're going to add a simple function that does everything for us. All right. If you already have a follow camera script, you can follow the steps along and then add these functionalities into your script. If you don't have a follow camera script, I highly recommend watching this particular video on the top right which is an in-depth tutorial on how to make a follow camera or follow target script. And if you don't want to watch it, that's absolutely fine. I have a link in the description in which you can download the script for free and then use it in your game. Yeah, so let's get right into it. So I have a player that has a player controller and it moves and jumps. And I have a main camera which has a follow target script. All right. So you need to create only one particular function to do all these things. And I have made a function called switch target. And this is how it looks. And this is just a very simple code and this function takes in two arguments which is a transform and a boolean and what it does is it just sets the current target which is of type transform and if this boolean is true we can change the offset while we are switching the target as well. All of these is explained in the video that I've mentioned and that video link will also be in the description of this video. All right, so we just need this particular function and you can call this particular function on any other external script to change the target of the camera and it will work it will work as long as you use smooth damp function or anything like lerp uh, if you're just simply setting the position like this it will not work because it will just simply snap into the required position so this may not be ideal you may have to use lerp instead or you could use simply smooth damp everything will be explained in the video and the only other thing that we do is we create a coroutine and this is the coroutine that we're going to make. A coroutine is simply a function that returns an object of type a enumerator. And what it is used for is to perform a particular task throughout multiple frames. That means we have a lot of potential for doing complex stuff which would have been impossible to do inside things like update or start or simple normal functions. And since you can do particular tasks across multiple frames, it means it introduces the concept of waiting. And this is really powerful because within one function call, you can make the control of your statement wait across multiple frames or time, let's say. I, I, if you're confused, it's totally fine. I'll try to explain with the best of my ability. Firstly, I've created five variables. We have a follow smooth time, we have a follow max speed, both of them are the speed of the camera when they are following, not when they are switching. The three other variables will be switch smooth time, switch max speed. And it is the speed of the camera, uh, smooth time and max speed for the camera while it is switching. And also we have a switch speed threshold which is set to 0.5. So the lower the value it, it is, the better it gives. So this is just to specify whether the transition has been complete or not. I just used a value of 0.5 but you can use a lower value if you want to. It's just your preference. And we're going to call this coroutine inside of switch target function like this start coroutine switch transition. And this just calls this coroutine. And, and since this is a public function, it's only called once, not across multiple frames like update or something. It is only called at one particular frame in which switch target is being called. Now to the coroutine itself, we start off by setting the smooth time and the max speed to switch smooth time and switch max speed. It just means we're just setting the speed of the camera to switch speed, which is going to be much higher than the follow speed. This is pretty straightforward. We're just changing the speed and the smooth time of the camera. And then we're going to wait until the camera accelerates above the specified threshold. And how we're going to do that is we're going to create a while loop when the magnitude of the velocity is less than or equals the speed threshold, we just wait that's it. So yield return new wait for end of frame just lets you wait until that particular frame is complete. And since this is inside a while loop, it will keep on waiting until that condition has satisfied. At this particular point, the camera will keep on waiting until the camera accelerates above the threshold, which means that it has started its journey from A and it's going to reach B. And after that, we're going to have another while loop. This time it's going to be the opposite of the previous while loop. We're going to keep waiting until the camera decelerates below the threshold. And it goes like this, while the magnitude is greater than or equals the switch speed threshold, keep waiting. So we only want to stop 
waiting until the value of the velocity reaches below the threshold right so we need a greater than symbol over here so we're just going to wait for end of frame here as well so we'll wait until the camera goes above the threshold and then keep on waiting until it goes below the threshold and that means once it goes above the threshold the only time when it goes below the threshold is when it reaches point b which means that the camera is about to reach the destination or it is about to complete the transition and at that particular point we're going to set the smooth time and max speed to the follow smooth time and follow max speed so this is going to be the follow speed of the camera i hope that makes sense and that is what you're going to do you're just going to call this particular function or coroutine and it will just do everything for you if you do want to do additional things you can always make a delegate call after this coroutine so that it does things after the transition has been taken place if you know how to work with delegates this will be really useful so this is the piece of code that we need we only need the switch target function now how do we make this work back in the editor i have created an exit it's just a capsule that just resembles a door and i have created this exit script and it's just nothing all right it's basically just an empty class but it will be useful because you're going to have an exit script you're going to have on trigger events or on collision events inside this because that's how exits work you need to have an exit script anyways but i haven't done the logic for these things but you get the point right so you just need an exit script and that's it it need not have any events but you will normally have an event inside a platform again and the only thing you need to do is to go to the player script i have a player controller here and if you want to know how I made this, you can check out the video in the top right that comes right now. It uses the new input system, so make sure to check that out if you are interested in it. Now, the only thing I have is a follow target, which is the camera follow script that I have. And I have an instance of that class. And at start, I set camera follow target as camera.main.get component follow target. You need to make sure that your camera has a tag called main camera. And then you call switch target to the transform, which is going to be the player. So you're going to switch the target to the player at start. So it's not going to have any effect. And then you're just going to pause the follow because these are the things that I've done in the previous videos. And the only two things that you need is you need a transform called exit gate. And I'm going to find object of type exit. And this is where we use that particular class. This is an empty class, by the way. You don't have anything else. And you're just going to find that particular object and then set it as the exit gate. And then we're just simply going to start coroutine. All right, this is going to be a coroutine inside of the player script and the coroutine is called show exit at start and it has an argument of type transform called exit gate and the coroutine is simply this it's an ini enumerator show exit at start transform exit firstly we're going to wait for one second then we're going to switch the target to the exit and then we're going to wait for two seconds and by that time that switching would have been completed and then we're going to switch the target back to the player which is the transform and then we're going to wait for one second and then enable the player input which means that i have player input component disabled inside my player so you can just enable it after you complete this intro sequence so that's how you basically do it and now i'll just quickly show you how it works as you can see the player input component is disabled and you have an intro sequence and then it is enabled and then i can move so that's how we do it So I hope this video was useful. If you have any doubts, you can join my Discord server and then raise complaints over there and then make fun of me if you want to. If you have any suggestion on what video I should make next, please do comment down below. Just a quick mention, I enjoy making this content because it's, it's, it's free and I have a platform to talk to people rather than in real life. I have no friends. Okay. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I enjoy making this content, but uh, I'm not getting enough time. So I apologize if I upload once a month or twice a month. Uh, it's mostly because I'm because my schedule is messed up. But yeah, I'll try my best to keep this channel going on because I enjoy doing these things. So yeah, see you. Take care. Bye bye. Subscribe. Subscribe.